on this episode, bugs are good actually. We're good. We're actually good. That's actually good. Cringe is good actually. You're allowed to have things awkward a little bit. And breaking things is the goal. <laughs> now I broke it. Yay! <laughs> Mm, hi everybody, hi everybody. <laughs> hi, this is Christian, this is Laser Death Academy. This is the uh, advanced my tutorial. Today I'm a little bit under the weather. My daughter has been sick for like five days straight. She's good now, but also bratty as heck. Which, you know, it tells you that she's good, but also maybe that she's a little bit too good. <laughs> um, right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to continue our uh, uh, editor. We've created this little editor called Spritedit. 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 And it looks like this. Uh, it gives us a whole bunch of, um, of sprites. Um, and we can loop through those sprites. This is really great. We can create new sprites. That's also good. Uh, but alas, we cannot edit a sprite. And that's something that we can, uh, comes in today. We're gonna t um, create like a UI to edit individual sprites. This is something I've been, I had my own process in this. Uh, I'm gonna show you at the end of this arc, I'm gonna show you my editor, the thing that I came up with when I created, when I uh, did my first attempt here. It was a, way too over engineered. Um, but the one approach I had here is, uh, to just like when you jump into a sprite, uh, I want to just see all of the values of the sprite, and then I want to be able to edit each value individually, kind of like in a in a vertical fashion. I just want to have like a list, like a column of values that I want to edit in each, each individual value. I think this makes a little bit more sense than horizontal that we had like in a table because. Eventually you run out of space when you do everything horizontal, you know, the numbers may be very, very long, you don't know. And you always want to also have the space uh, to actually see the actual sprite, because I think this is really important that you can see, you see what you're editing, right? We kind of talked about this, um, that you want to have like an immediate feedback when you make decisions, although admittedly these are not necessarily creative decisions here, but you know, still it's good to have this immediate feedback. Uh, by the way, something I wanted to do, I wanted to get this line here when we're reloading um, the sprite sheet. I'm going to put it, put it in here, in a customize here section. Uh, although, to be honest, like this is no longer the template you're working on. Um, just so, uh, because some, some editors might not need the sprite sheet, we're going to see. Cool. So we already created this edit. Up, we, have, we have update edit. And I have to like... I'm just like, my mind is just completely in, in uh, child is sick mode and I, <laughs> I don't know what we're even doing. I have to like re-familiarize myself here. Cool, okay. So I see we have, um, let me let me put some notes down here. So this is gonna be um, the raw sprite. Um, this is gonna be um, blinking dot. And this bad boy here, that's gonna be just background back. Ground. Cool, 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 cool. Um, update is we're not doing anything, we're just refreshing the edit, uh, uh, which is gonna be here. <laughs> it's just nothing. <laughs> okay, let's start. Um, so actually what I want to maybe do immediately is I want to uh, add a um, um, top menu item. And that menu item is, uh, again, it's supposed to be just the name of the sprite. The name of the sprite is what I'm thinking. Uh, right, so you know how we had this, um, when we run this, it tells us, you know, SPR one, two, three, and so forth. Um, I'm just wanna, I wanna print that on top. Uh, <laughs> we don't have to, we don't. Well, actually it already, it's already here, right? Uh, SPR, um, I have to remember, I, I, sorry, <laughs> just a couple of days passed and I'm just like, ah! Uh, cell spur was the variable that stores the name of the sprite we are currently editing. So it's some, something like sprite cell spur. Um, this is concerning. Although I guess we, it doesn't really matter. In the end, it doesn't really matter. And then it's like, um, SPR head, it's the header. 
of the of the sprite. Um, CMD is not really necessary here. Um, I'm just like um, setting up where where this little little bad boy is gonna be. It's gonna be two two something like this. Let's see if this works. It's just like I want to see some kind of like give me little victories right now. If you're if you're not feeling confident and you're not feeling good and you're not feeling I feel like under the weather, I think it's important to give yourself small victories. You know, just lower your expectations. <laughs> And that's my me lowering my expectations. I just want to see a thing on the screen. So the reason why I'm doing this, we're gonna actually the reason is gonna become gonna wait wait wait. Can we actually move? No, no, oh yeah, we can. The reason why we're doing this will become apparent. But actually, I want to add a little bit of a detail, which is this as uh, greater than a smaller than character, and then we're gonna add another one on the other side. And you can probably already think know where this is going. Um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about it later. Okay, so this is the first thing added. Um, now I want to maybe do a list of all of the values of the of the current spread that we're currently editing. So we are looping through a whole bunch of data. Um, um, of the cell spur data. Well, actually. Now, now let me think about this. Um, we definitely want to at least show at least six because there, I think there are six values for <laughs> six values for the for the base uh, information. But then there's seventh and eight, right? So we need to actually do eight, and we're gonna check for nil values as well. Um, and then, and then, and then each you know, for each line, we're gonna do uh, something like this. Something like all this, Mr. Porter. Um, the text, the text is gonna be uh, data cell spur. So we're taking the sprite um, that we are uh, currently editing and then putting an I in here. But actually, I don't wanna just drop it like there, like it's in there. First, I'm gonna do something like um, local s equals this right and then i'm gonna go if s equals nothing no if it's nil then and then i'm gonna go s equals and in this case we just put nil in there so um so we know when things are nil uh, and then we're gonna put this sprite this helper sprite that's something that we're gonna put in the actual text um it it, I, it it came back to haunt me. So um, I'm a bit worried about this W thing because um, again, this is like the kind of like the background that we're drawing behind the um, the the text. So we kind of drawing each text box twice um, in order so when you start editing things, you still see the text box, the full text box in the background, and it's supposed to be empty. Uh, right now we're just drawing like a tiny little like a non-existent text box. We're just not drawing no text whatsoever to the screen um, because. Here for this it didn't really make uh, make a difference because we're not never gonna like edit this, uh, but we definitely want to edit these. So we now we need to show text um, behind the the thing, uh, like a text box, um, and we have to show as many um, space characters as um, our s variable has entry. So we have to generate. A string of space characters, a certain amount of space characters. So we need to we need to have, we need a function for this. Um, so let's let's do something like space. Let's call this space jam. <laughs> space jam, uh, and then I'm gonna go hashtag s. So we're gonna create the space jam function now. Uh, I don't know what's what's a good way of doing this. I don't know. There might be a, there might be a, a smart way of doing this. I'm, I'm going to use a dumb way of doing this. For i equals one to space jam. All right, all right, all right, all right. No, no, it's 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 n. Do I'm just going to do a for next loop for this. And if you guys have a cool smart way, of, because some I know some programming languages have this built in, like generate this string, you know. So I don't know local uh, ret equals nothing and then we're gonna go red dot dot equals space right something like this so this will and then i'm gonna return the red 
So this will generate a string of n number of space characters. <laughs> I know this is kind of like a really awkward way of doing this, but you know, it's an editor. It's, it, you're allowed to have things awkward a little bit. You don't have to have things to be perfect right now. Uh, all right, so we generate this. I'm not even sure if this works, by the way. I'm gonna have to check if this works. Um, and then we're gonna go here. Um, yeah, we're gonna call this edit. Let's call it edit, val edit value. And then CM CMD X, CMD Y is gonna be sales per, uh, CMD X is gonna be uh, I. Something like this. Now the positions here, um, two is okay. Y is gonna be two plus I multiplied by eight, I think. Let's gonna see. I'm 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 ready. I'm ready. Take me home. Be, be me up, Scotty. Let's go. Woo! Do, do, do. Uh, all right. S is a S is a um, uh, number. So that's why we cannot get a length from this. Uh, we're gonna um, go to stir. This is a function. I don't know. If we talked about this, but this function to stir changes something in the string, and usually it happens automatically. But sometimes it doesn't have to happen automatically. And then you get problems like this where you cannot get a length of a variable because it's not a string yet, it's a number, but we can print it on a screen like it, it was a string. It's, it's, a, it's a bit weird, it's a bit silly, I think. But yeah, let's try that. Okay, see, this works. This totally works. We have our individual uh, entries. I would maybe, Go seven and then three here. Let's try that. Just a little bit of a, so the spacing is a little bit together. Okay, so we have the individual entries now. We have the individual uh, uh, values for the sprite. This is good. Now the values themselves are kind of like, because we might be like, like in a position that I am currently in, right? We might be sometimes in a position where we are just like hazy. We haven't used this program for a long time. We don't know what values is what. So it could be good to have a bit of a label there to kind of like communicate to people as like, this is what this thing does. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add a label to each individual entry. Okay, so uh, let's go, let's, let's call it something like a local lab. Let's call it lab, it's gonna be a, the label. So the first one is gonna be X, the second one is gonna be Y, the next one is gonna be X, Y, <laughs> with, Next one is gonna be height. Um, then we're gonna go OX, OY. Then we're gonna go FX, effect. And then we're gonna go ne next. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's do like a Let's do something like this. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm just like trying to find out. So we're gonna assume that each entry is gonna be three letters long. Um, vid. Hi. He, he, <laughs> HD. <laughs> I don't know. Why do you abbreviate height? Something like this. Okay. And so now when we're adding things, we're not just adding um, this one thing. Um, let's actually do a, like a, should we do it in one line? Yeah, we're gonna do it in one line, whatever. Shrunk it like this. Oh yeah, I'm still hot. Um, uh, and yeah, this is this is a bit of a this is a bit of a nightmare. I, I hate editing these kinds of like inline things. I, I am not good in them. I never find a good unawkward way of doing annotations in them. It's just like, ugh. But yeah, something like this, right? So this is gonna be like our actual um, actual value that we're editing. And this is just gonna be the label here, right? So the label is gonna be txt equals um, a lab square brackets i. So we're gonna grab those label entries here. I'm gonna put them in here. Uh, the width is gonna be four. One, two, three, four, something like this. <laughs> uh, the CMD is not, it's gonna be nothing. It's gonna be no CMD whatsoever. Um, 
and then the x is going to be this and the y is going to be this. So the y is and the x are the same. Um, now this needs to be now offset to the side. So it's like 4 times 3, so it's like 12. Let's go 14. Um, 12, 2 times. I'm just, uh, just going to keep like this. What is this? Um, there's a comma missing somewhere. Oh yeah, not uh, normal brackets, curly brackets. And then we haven't, <laughs> this is just like all over the place today. What is happening? Okay, this is good. This is good. I like this. Uh, we need to move them uh, even more over. So it's like 16. Let's try that. Yeah, see? This is good. What if you move it to 17? I don't know. 18? Oops. Yeah, I, I I don't I don't like that. I think sixteen was the best. Yeah, this seems this seems this seems the best. So now we have a whole bunch of um, uh, labels and you know the associated uh, data entries. This is good. This is good. Next up, now what I want to do is I want to now be able to go move the cursor. I I can't actually move the cursor right now because we have disabled this. So I want to now move the cursor to this. Uh, so we're going to go in update function and it's going to be kind of like similar to this stuff right so yeah let's let's just like let's just go let's just go let's just copy this stuff so yeah yeah i definitely go, want to go with this this is good let's try this okay this is good the problem is that we're now selecting the labels and i don't want to select the labels i want to just select the data so we're going to go something like if um, curry uh, equals, well, we could do a ternary, but whatever. If this is one, um, then else this. So curry is going to be usually two, um, but in the first line it's going to be one, right? So now we can uh, select this this top we can select this top here but we can also go down this this is cool this is this is exactly what we're looking for good and it rotates through that's i i like that i, I like being able to rotate it through okay all right so now that we can move through the things i want to add functionality i want to go systematically through and keep adding the functionality before we go there though I, something i want to check maybe is if do we actually is this is this actually working is this is this space jam thing actually working? So here, when we doing a space jam, let's let's just like do this. It seems to be working. Yeah, it seems to be working. Okay, good. So um, space jam works. Uh, let's now add the functionality. So again, an update function um, here. Um, here. I want to, um, so if somebody select, selects the caption here, all the way on top, I want to move sideways. So I want to be like, uh, if B, T, N, P, L, then else, if B, T, N, P, R, then. So I want to be able to step through individual um, sprites in this screen, in this edit screen as well, like give it a bit of a redundancy. Um, it's a little detail, we don't need this, but I think it's kind of nice. So I'm gonna, gonna press left, we're gonna do cell spur minus equal one, and I'm gonna press right, I'm gonna go cell spur plus equals one. Uh, and then after we did this, we're gonna make sure that cell spur uh, equals mid zero oh, cell spur, uh, and the maximum value is going to be number of data, right? So we're never going to have a cell spur that is outside of the range. Oh, this should be one outside of the range of the data that we have. Uh, and if we select a different sprite, I actually want to return. Uh, right. So let's. This. So now I can like jump through the sprites here and can see the the numbers changing. That might be a uh, Actually, like really, like real talk, we could have done just with this screen. We actually didn't need the other screen. Um, 
but whatever, whatever. Oh, by the way, something I noticed is I, I cannot actually go out of the screen. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna, it might be nice if we can just like return to the other screen. So we're gonna go if um, btn p, btn p, o, then, then end. And if we go out, then I want to set everything to this. Uh, so we're gonna draw list and then uh, also maybe just reset the cursor. Uh, I'm gonna go cur x uh, cur y equals cells per plus one. Let's try that. So we have selected spread number four. We go in here. Ah, we need to, we need to fix this. And then we go out. And, oh, we are now at five. Ooh, so it should be cells per five. Okay, now it stays five. Okay, good. Um, I just want to make sure that if I enter this mode, if I enter the edit mode, I want to have cur x, uh, cur y, I want to set it to one. So when we enter the edit mode, I want the cursor to be automatically in the top row. Okay, okay. And then edit, uh, go out. So I can go into edit mode, and I can go out technically, but it doesn't really work. Why not? Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. We want only the return to happen if we actually, if we actually press the button. Uh, maybe, maybe the return, maybe, maybe it's going to be fine. Maybe it's going to be fine, you know, not, let's not return. Let's just not return. Um, so we cannot draw anymore because something is, has been set to nil. Uh, not good. N very not good. Okay, so this is the line where the error is happening. I, I don't know. It's, something is wrong with cur x and cur y. And I want to maybe um, uh, d if cur y equals... Uh, let's f find out if it's cur y or cur x is problem. So if cur y equals nil or cur cur x equals nil, then uh, debug debug one equals cur y debug two equals cur x, and then we're not gonna draw anything. This is so so confusing. Okay, we know that this definitely will trigger the problem. I know it. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so the problem is that when we're switching to a different mode, we actually want to also refresh um, that mode as well. First of all, here, when we do going to an edit mode, I actually want to refresh to the edit mode. Uh, and also, I want, when I switch to the list mode, I want to refresh the, um, the is it refresh list? Yeah, it's refresh, refresh list. Um, so the problem was that we switched to a different mode um, and everything was fine and peachy, but then the program called the draw function before it called the update function. Uh, and the update function is the one that um, repopulates the menu. Um, so the menu was still internally, the, the menu array was still internally um, set to the edit mode. And so it tried to do stuff with the menu um, that is set to edit mode but apply you know the mechanics and the logic of the uh, the list mode and that's what caused the problem so if we go do the refresh list it will reconstruct the menu for the list mode and that should fix the problem yes Whew, man i was <laughs> this is this is not good this is I'm not in a, in a cons I don't do not have the constitution to stomach these these kinds of problems today. Good. Uh, I wanted to add um, more functionality now. Um, so we can now switch between the, the two different modes, and now I want to maybe start editing things. Um, so again, we're gonna go if uh, btnp x then. 
And in this case, it's going to be very similar to here. Uh, we're going to just check. Um, so we're going to get the menu. Um, and the menu is going to be not cur x. Yeah, well, it's going to be cur x. Um, and then we're going to check what kind of um, what kind of command we are having. So we're going to say if command equals um, what kind of commands do we have? I think it was added val, right? Added val, yeah. So if it is added val, then and in this case, you know, a lot of things will happen. <laughs> um, yeah, here. Yeah. This is the stuff that we had. This is the code that we have in, uh, had in the Excel version of our game. I'm gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it in here. All right, so now we are editing this value. We're setting it to the to type. Uh, we're setting the type text type text to um, I don't know if it's setting to the menu text is a good idea because sometimes it's gonna be stuff that's gonna be nil. We can do something like if type um mm, mm, mm. yeah let's let's grab the data that we're editing and we're gonna see if this is nil yeah no actually you know what Let, let's just do it generally like this so we're gonna grab the data uh cells per my menu dot uh, cmd x like this Uh, we can just go com completely whoa, 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 like this. CMDY, CMDX. So we're going to grab our little, uh, the data. And we're going to go, if S equals nil, then S equals this. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put this into the type text. So we're grabbing data directly uh, from the stuff and not from the menu item. The reason for this is I, if I edit the nil value, I actually want to have an, an empty space there. Um, okay, so this is this should be good. Now when we're drawing things, I want it to react to the drawing the way it did before in the Excel uh, version of our game. Um, so this was table, right? Oh, that should be it. That, that should just work. Uh, let's hope. No way! <laughs> okay, 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 okay. But we're almost there. We're almost there. Don't, don't, don't. Hmm? We're good. We're actually good. That's actually good. Um, so something I want to do now is, this is the enter. This is UPD type, right? Uh, and this is where, where we're pressing enter. And now we kind of have to make sure that Different things happen uh, when you press enter, when you're typing in stuff, depending on what mode we are currently in. Right now, this 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 thing, this old stuff, uh, kind of like expects us to always be in the Excel mode, but sometimes we're not really in the Excel mode, right? So something I want to do something is like, if, although, no, actually, let's, be, let's do it correctly. So here, we're, um, here's for example, when we're editing in the Excel version of our game, and we're gonna do something like type, we're gonna create a new variable called type callback. Let's, let's call it type call, <laughs> we not add the back. And so this will, um, here we're gonna save a function that we're gonna call when uh, the user pressed enter. That function, we're gonna put it in here in the IO, I think. No, not in the IO, in the UI. Uh, we're gonna call a function called um, uh, table enter enter table right um, so this is gonna be a, and it's gonna be a different enter function for enter edit for the edit mode when you press enter something else should happen. Um, Something like this, right? So again, in the update function, when we start editing stuff, there's gonna be, enter table is gonna be the thing that is gonna be called after. Uh, and when we're pressing enter in the normal, uh, in, the, in the edit mode here, no, here, here um, is gonna, not gonna be enter table, but enter edit. 
Okay, mm, so now we're gonna go all the way down here where the actual stuff is where we press the enter button. This is the stuff that happens when we press enter, right? This stuff. Uh, there's some things that are probably gonna be universal. So, you know, this is something, this is okay. This stuff. Okay, we definitely want to cancel the the uh, menu being open, but otherwise everything else is going to be up to those uh, those functions here. So I'm going to drop all the stuff in here. Okay, and then going back to the update function, uh, I'm going to actually call our function. So um, we're going to go type call. We're just going to call the type call the function that we saved in type call. And this is going to be the callback function. It's called the callback function. I don't know if you heard about this, but <laughs> uh, callback function is basically you supply some kind of variable, you save a function, a variable, and you do some stuff. And when that stuff is finished, uh, it will call back. It will re return your call, so to speak, and it will uh, call a function. And you can select different functions to be called at the end of the process. So in this case, at the end of uh, typing in stuff and pressing enter, there's going to be a function that's being called and uh, that function might change in what, depending on what kind of mode we are in. All right, so type call is now being called here. That's good. Oh, actually the type call, we might want to do the type call after the poke. I'm not sure if this is necessary, but I just want to make sure. Okay. Um, okay. And then we're going to edit the enter, the to enter function. So enter table is, is, going, is going to stay the same. We're going to test enter table later. But first, uh, I want to also write um, the enter edit. So update edit, we're going to want to switch to update edit afterwards for sure. Um, my menu is good. Type val, okay, that's good. Uh, if type val equals nil, uh, all sorts of weird stuff happens. Uh, for now, we're just gonna make it zero. Uh, and then data, data uh, my menu, otherwise everything is fine. We just, the only thing that's really changed is what kind of, um, what kind of value or, or what kind of mode update function we're switching back to. Okay, so let's try that. This worked. This totally worked. It was a bit of weird. You could, quickly, you could see the uh, something. It's weird that you could quickly see something there. I'm concerned about that. But okay. Oh, maybe something we should do here is um, actually refresh. We should refresh immediately. I think that's a good idea. So here in refresh edit, we're gonna refresh edit. And here we're going to refresh table. Zable. Uh, okay, so so far this work. I just want to make sure that um, our our Excel hasn't hasn't been broken. Draw a table. So this is our Excel function. Sucks the sucks. Okay, this works. And I can also, oops, <laughs> I can also delete stuff here, right? Okay, so this works. Right, setting things back to list view. Uh, list. Okay, so now I can get in here and I can start editing things. Um, I can start setting things to zero, setting things to zero, uh, setting the height to six. Yeah, this, this seems to be working. <laughs> now I broke it, yay! <laughs> All right, so this episode has been going for quite some time, but for now, let us move on to the dog is on. That's right, the dog is on. Yeah, the dog is on. So uh, this is already looking good, this is good. We can actually, this is actually a workable editor, generally, broadly speaking. There is a, some little tweaks that I, I still missing. One definitely thing that I'm missing is that you know, we can scroll all the way down, we can create new sprites. 
Oh, by the way, this is... <laughs> what is this? We have to get to the bottom of this error for sure. So this is a one one problem here, right? But actually the thing I wanted to get at is that um, if, if we cannot actually delete sprites, there's no way to deleting sprites. We can create new sprites, but we cannot delete them. So one task, there's gonna be a bunch of little details, but one task for a doggy zone is to add a way of deleting things. And it's gonna be up to you to come up with some ways. I have an idea, but I want you to kind of like get in the mindset of designing your own UI the way you think should things should work, the way things feel natural to you. Another thing I want you to think about or, 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 or like investigate is stuff like, for example, here we can set the next sprite to five and it will crash the game <laughs> out of memory. <laughs> and the reason is that we entered an infinite loop where the next sprite is the same sprite. So it's like an infinite loop. So we want to add some robustness of this thing. So I want you to fix these kinds of things. Another thing I want you to think about is like, okay, we can set the next sprite but we cannot set it to like nil back to remove the next sprite right you can set it to zero but then we're gonna get an error just like a whole bunch of robustness stuff that i want you to get through i want to maybe start poking around values and making the game crash or the editor crash and fixing all those little patches but more than anything, I'm actually interested in the kind of uh, editors that you guys came up with. So feel free to post your results in the Discord or down in the comment section. Yes, yes, yes. And now we're going to move on to the part where I will say a big thank you and a huge shout out to all the people who are supporting this show on coffee.com slash lazy devs. It's a great website. You can check it out. And if you support the show, you get to see new episodes earlier. Thank you so much for everybody who's been supporting me all this time. And also, I wanted to read some comments. This is a comment by Turtle Quitty in episode 19. Not a dig at you in the slightest. Um, you do what you have to to make your game work. But the split function is one of the big reasons I dislike working in Pico8. It's such a cheat. There is too much emphasis on non-existent tokens versus something more concrete than actual resources your game uses. Like an actual retro console would measure in compiled card size, actual graphics usage and code size. Haha. <laughs> uh, always love seeing your work in Pico8 though. You have a knack for being fun to watch no matter what. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much Turtle Quitty. Um, I understand the frustration. It seems like, you know, a lot of things in Pico8 are um, kind of arbitrary, like tokens seem not real. Um, but also, there is a there is a there is a truth pill that you need to take here. Everything is fake here. <laughs> like every single thing about Pico8 is fake. The limitations are not really there to simulate an actual console because all this stuff is really bogus and it gets really, really broken down once you get into the um, memory stuff of it because like there is the memory but there is also a whole different type of memory that you can't really access that is way bigger than what you have in the actual p 8 memory. And yeah, once you get into CPU stuff, it all just, the, the illusion just completely melts away like ice in the sunshine. It's crazy. But also I think it's important to think about these limitations not as something as that is real and existing and you know, that just teaches you something about retro computers, not so much, but more about whether over overcoming those limitations is something that is fun and enjoyable and fuels your creativity. And I think for that, the tokens are a way better choice than, you know, what you talked about, like, um, you know, size, you know, when you have to comp you know, compress the code into a certain amount of bytes, you start like counting individual bytes and it's like this really detailed work that is just literally destroying the readability of the code, like even more than, than the token stuff does. As for the split, <laughs> the split thing is like funny thing because it was added very late and the thing is like you could remove the split but then people would just write their own split function i write wrote my own split function in the past so like it's just like gives you a bunch of tokens for free if that split becomes part of pk8 that's nice anyways this was it in the next episode i want to wrap this everything up i want to fix all the little bugs and, and holes and so forth and maybe i want to add one last feature see you next time around guys bye bye